Hello, and welcome to this video presentation of your first Pluto project. This will introduce you to how to work with the ABB Safety PLC Pluto unit. The following video will introduce how the tool Pluto Manager works when creating PLC code. This is part 5 in a series of videos. Click on PLC code in the Pluto D45 Unit 0, in the tree to the left. The Pluto is programmed by using ladder logic. The PLC code is executed by two processors inside each Pluto unit in a redundant, two-channel structure. Anything presented as a single component, is in fact, two-channel in the background. This ensures the highest possible level of safety. In the Pluto unit it's possible to perform sequence programming. PLC code is actually the sequence number, 0. Use this to separate the PLC code into different parts. For example safety, and non-safety. Creating different parts of safety and non-safety makes it easy to read, and understand the program. Add a new sequence by menu clicking on the PLC code in the tree to the left. A number of functions can be performed. Delete Pluto unit. Renumber the Pluto unit's node number. Duplicate a Pluto with its own unique node number. Change a Pluto unit into another type. Name the new sequence non-safety. Click on the safety part of the PLC code. It's easy to expand, or collapse networks to focus on parts of the code. Enter a network and leave it by either update it or undo it. The escape key works as well. Menu click in the area to the right of the tree without being in edit mode. This will open a pop-up window in which several actions can be performed. It's easy to copy and paste a network or a number of networks. Choose New Network. In the following window an empty network can be chosen. Or a basic network containing a single contact, and coil. A network containing a set coil, a reset coil, or a toggle coil. Arithmetics with full add, subtract, multiplication, and division functionality. Sequence jumps, sequence steps, and configuration options. Finally there is the function wizard. The wizard will make it easy to choose a block from any of the libraries added to the project. Open Funk 06. The most commonly used blocks can be found under the basic section. As can be seen there are a number of other sections with blocks available. Such as blocks to realize muting functions of, as an example. Light guards, using the light guard 1 block. The light curtain blocks are actually used in press applications. There are also blocks for the status bus when using the dynamic signal in a circuit. Or blocks that are still included that may have been used in older projects, to allow the manager to be backwards compatible. The TC2T block will be used to realize the two-channel emergency stops function. This block uses two inputs, out of three, and performs monitoring of any two-channel faults that may occur. A two-channel fault is, when two inputs, that are expected to always follow each other, only switch one channel off, and then back on again. As an example, a loose cable causing a poor connection. This is not normal behavior, and it must be detected. The blocks function is fully described in any of the available languages. Now the network is in edit mode. Add a comment that will make it easy to follow the program. Double click on a contact to open up a window, in which the contact can be configured. Use the default, normally open contact. It's possible to enter single bits, from inside registers, as well. In the drop-down menu, 
choose the emergency stops channel 1 or enter the address manually. Do the same for the other contact. Menu click on the contact connected to the test input of the block. Delete it. What about the external device monitoring? The feedback signal of the two contactors? We'll get to that later. Leave the test input connected, otherwise the block's output will never become true. Now double-click on the block's output coil, connected to Q. Use the quick button to create a bit, to keep track of the emergency stop. High, or logical one, is always the safe state. Use the description field to enter a clear description of what the intention of the bit is. Create another bit where the two-channel fault is detected. Add a description. Update the network to bring it out of edit mode. Once again use the wizard to create a controlled reset function of the machine. Use the reset 2T block. Add the emergency stop OK bit to the input, in 1 of the block by double-clicking on the contact. The gate, which is monitored by the Eden sensor, must also be added to the network. Do so by clicking on the contact in the upper part, and put it in place. Select the Eden sensor. Its dynamic signal is already evaluated as on, or off by the two processors inside the Pluto unit. There is no need to run it through a special block. If a dynamic signal emergency stop, such as the Smile Tina were used instead, none of the two-channel fault handling would need to be implemented. This would use less inputs, and it could be monitored by the status bus blocks. This with the maximum safety level reached even if connected in series. The usefulness of the global variables are demonstrated here. Simply choose the light button in Pluto Unit 1. Its status will be transmitted over the CAN bus by its host Pluto Unit. Here would be a good place to add the external device monitoring signal. However, to demonstrate it's easy to add and configure I.O. signals not originally included, this will be done later. Simply leave the test input connected. Double click on the coil for the Q output of the block. Use the quick button to create a help bit which indicates the status of the safety output, Q. Do the same with the Indicate Reset Coil. Since the Reset Light button is in the other Pluto unit, Unit 1, the status must be transmitted over the bus. Use the Quick button, and use a global memory, instead of a local. Then its status will be transmitted over the bus between the two units. This will be used later to use the light button's indicator light, to show the status of the safety in the machine. Add a comment to clarify the function of the network. To show that it's easy to add IOS later in the project, the external device monitoring signal will be added. Go to the I.O. options and configure I32 as a static input. Then go to Variables, and then click on the Safety Inputs tab. Give the input a suitable name and description, such as this input will monitor Contactor 1, and Contactor 2.
enter edit mode of the network, then choose a normally open contact in the top part of the manager. Place it, and add the variable. Add a clarifying comment, and update the network. Add two networks, one for each contactor, so that when the safe state is reached, the two contactors are activated. Add clarifying comments. Remember the light button in the other Pluto unit, Unit 1? The Reset 2T block works so that the Indicate Reset output is steady high when it's not possible to reset the block. The output will flash if it's possible to perform a reset, but a reset hasn't been called for. When the block is reset and the safe state is achieved, the output will be set to off. This will be shown in a later episode in this video series, called Download and Monitor. Use the global memory created for the Indicate Reset Output, to control the lamp in the light button. Select a basic network, connect the global memory to the contact, and the light button's output part to the coil. Now the button will indicate the state of the safety. Remember the two-channel fault bit that was created for the two-channel emergency stop? To make an operator of the machine aware of this problem, so that a service can be called for, this information can be transmitted to an external device. To do so use the blocks found under the external comm section in the wizard. A good place to use the blocks would be in the other sequence named non-safe that was created. This part contains blocks mainly for gateway communication, but some are used when connected to an HMI panel. This kind of communication is non-safe. How this is done will not be shown in this video. In this part of the series it was shown how to use blocks to create a PLC program to control the safety. How to use sequences to split the program into different parts to get a better overview. Remember to use comments to clarify what the program does. Keep it simple so it's easy to follow. The next part, in this video series, will show how the compiler works.